Okay, this is part two of our personality theories series. Good news, everyone! Today we will talk about Carl Jung. <laughs> Carl Jung was one of Freud's students. He was a protege, and they were very close friends until Jung started thinking for himself. As soon as he started developing theories, that departed from Freud's ideas. Freud dropped him as a friend and pretty much wrote him off. Screw you guys, I'm going home. Freud divided the personality into three components, the id, ego, and superego, and they were housed partially in the conscious mind. And the conscious mind is that which we're aware of and partially in the unconscious mind, which is that which we're unaware of. I was not aware. It's your subconscious. You can imagine the conscious and unconscious minds as an iceberg. The conscious mind is much smaller. It's the tip of the iceberg that is above the water. That's our awareness. And the unconscious mind is extremely broad and it's what we're not aware of, and it's below the water. Carl Jung added an additional layer at the very bottom. Ladies and gentlemen, welcome to my underground layer. In Jung's model, we have the conscious mind, which we're aware of, the personal unconscious mind, which is the parts of ourselves that we're unaware of, and the collective unconscious mind. And this collective unconscious mind houses the blueprint for all of the possibilities a person might become. It's so cool! In modern terms, we might consider this a genotype. Jung believed that each of us contained all of the potential personality characteristics possible. These potential personality characteristics he called archetypes. What? And each person has all of the archetypes in their collective unconscious. Mm. Jung describes many archetypes, but we'll review just a few. Hey, thank you. Unlike Freud, who had a fairly narrow Western European view Carl Jung was a student of the world. His theories came from commonalities between cultures across the planet. He believed that if you took a group of children and put them on an island and they were able to survive, that when you came back in 50 years, you would find that someone on the island was the ruler. There would be teachers, healers, and warriors. Because every culture on the planet has people filling these roles. Jung's theory is that the potential to become a warrior or a teacher or a ruler or a healer exists in all of us. So you might say, well, I'm not much of a warrior, but Jung would say, well, that's not because you don't have the potential, it's because you haven't developed the warrior aspects of yourself. Each one of these archetypes, the ruler, the warrior, the healer, and the teacher have a shadow side. From the shadows I come. So if you can think of the qualities of a good leader, a good ruler is fair and puts the needs of the people before his own needs. A good ruler is strong and decisive. But the ruler archetype also has a shadow side. And these are the negative aspects of the ruler. So those would be uh, someone who's a tyrant, who uses the people and puts his own needs first or her own needs first. Likewise, the positive aspects of the warrior are they're brave and they protect people. The shadow aspects would be uh, a bully and basically a coward. A good teacher is knowledgeable and a good communicator. Uh, The shadow aspect of the teacher is a know-it-all. A good healer does no harm. 
A shadow healer is a quack. Quack, 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 quack. Jung says that we're pretty good at owning the positive aspects of the archetypes and pretty terrible at owning the shadow aspects. Jung says that a healthy person Your health is low. owns all of the aspects of the self and works with them. So there was a great Star Trek episode where Captain Kirk beams himself down to a planet and when he comes back He's gone through an ion storm or something. And he's been divided into two Kirks. The good Kirk, who is kind and loving and caring and gentle and honest. And evil Kirk, who is a womanizer and a liar and a bully and a coward. Evil Kirk is so bad that they have to put him in the brig. They have to put him in jail while good Kirk runs the starship. But the problem is that a good starship captain has to make difficult decisions that sometimes cause harm to other people. Oh, that's awkward. And what he found was that good Kirk was a pretty terrible, indecisive starship captain. Ooh, you suck! He really needed the shadow aspects of himself in order to be a complete person and be an effective starship captain. So Jung basically says that that's what all of us need to do. We know that denying natural parts of the self results in those aspects coming out in negative and inappropriate ways. If you're doing something that makes me angry and I act like it doesn't make me angry, and you keep doing it, and I keep ignoring it, and you keep doing it, and I keep ignoring it. Just stop it, Tom! Just stop it! Nobody likes you, Tom! Eventually, my anger is going to come out in an inappropriate way. Likewise, um, if you see environments where sexuality is prohibited in prisons, and uh, actually in the priesthood, you see that this is a natural aspect of being a human being, and when you prohibit it, it comes out in inappropriate and negative ways. So if we go back to the three questions, what is life all about? For you, life is all about owning the whole self. How do we screw it up? Well, we screw it up by denying parts of ourselves. And the way we fix it is by acceptance of the shadow aspects of ourselves and also the archetypes that we have not developed. So by working with the whole person, we become happy and well-balanced.